Hello and welcome along. Today we're back on the west coast. We are heading down to uh, field uh, 86 down by our other farm. We're going to be harvesting some canola, so we're going to get the John Deere out now and uh, and head over there. So without further ado, let's jump in. Get the trailer hooked up. And canola will be a nice bit of income for us. Exactly what we need right now. Once so we've backed up and hitched up. Oh, there we go. Ah, it seems we can't hitch this trailer up to this combine. So, because I think I think it's because the head is in the wrong place. So what we're going to do is we get to get the combine out and up, and then we will put the tractor on follow me with the trailer behind and then we'll have to run back and get the actual trailer in a bit so we'll need to combine here for the moment and run back get our tw15 which is here no nope, that is the wrong one there we go jump in there There we are. Start her up, and away we go. Perfect. So we'll hook this up to our header trailer. Go. Head back out. So I'm sorry if I sound a bit nasally tonight. I think I have, or this afternoon, I think I have a cold coming on. Whoa. Nope, disengaged it. Right, there we go. There we are. We don't want that going, trying to go ahead of the combine and driving into the back of it. And off we go. No, combine is too close. To the gateway. Right, there we are turn a bit earlier. We should be able to swing around here. The tractor has a much smaller turning circle, so that should be able to get around here. Better than our combine does. We get the combine out of the hedge. We get the beacons on. There we go. The tractor is coming out. There we go. It's made it. Yeah, so I drive the combine rather than the tractor because the combine is that much wider. It helps to uh, lead the way for the tractor and prevent anything bad happening. Uh, we still have traffic off at the moment, which is good for us doing this. Basically treating it as if I've got a tra uh, car ahead of me blocking the roadway and stopping any cars coming. There we go. Get on the right side of the road. Even though we cover about one and a half lanes. Just in case somebody was to decide to sneak past our convoy vehicle. There we go. So I think I think this video is due to go out the day after yeah this video is due to go out the day after the time lapse so uh, let me guys let uh, you guys let me know what you think of that I uh, I enjoyed doing it it was good fun it took a lot longer than normal and I'm uh, yeah I'm recording this straight after that and it is uh, yeah it's taken a while to edit it. 
but it was good fun to do and I'm enjoying the fact that I'll be able to do uh, larger jobs with it. Although I think that John Deere on, I have on that map is going to have to change. I think it has an issue with header height. So I'm either going to have to adjust the XML or adjust its settings or, uh, or replace it with one that does work. It's unfortunate because the other one of, of that type doesn't have quite such a big uh, capacity. So it won't work quite as well. Now it's possible we might place it, uh, change it with a uh, a New Holland or something like that. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, but for today, for today, we are back on the west coast. Uh, I hope everybody's still enjoying this map. Uh, it looked like everybody enjoyed the last episode on here with the uh, doing the silage. Uh, that was also good fun. Getting that set up. We've done a couple of live streams with that as well. Sort of perfecting that technique. And uh, yeah, enjoyed that very much. Right, I'm just trying to work out the best way into this field for this TW15. I think our best bet is actually to go up to the farm. Uh, yeah, otherwise we're gonna have to we're gonna have to put it into the field. But we can do that. We'll lose a little bit of lose uh, a little bit of crop doing it this way, but it'll get us in there quicker. Oh, when we pop back and grab the. Uh, and grab the trailer. We need to put some fuel in this tractor. We've not got a lot of money. We should be better off at the end of the day because our cows are in a better condition. Uh, but I think next episode is probably going to be dealing with those because they are they are low on food. So I don't know what their productivity is like at the moment. Yeah, we are losing a bit of crop doing this here. This is a good field for this episode. I don't want to turn that off. I'm going to jump out. Head around to here. There we go. Right, and line up to our header. There we go. Perfect. And then we will drive the tractor out of the way. Goes. Right. We could have used another tractor for this. But um I like the TW15. If you if you can't tell, I use the TW15 on this map a lot out of the uh, five tractors we've got, I think. Oh yeah, there we go. Folding it out. Turning it on. And I'll have to cut straight in for a bit, I think. Yep. And then lift up. And back down again. There we go get that little bit at the end when we come around next time actually that's the other thing on this this combine only travels at about five miles an hour so it's uh, it's not the fastest combine in the world it could possibly this is the other reason why with the size of fields that we have on this farm I'm looking at either upgrading to a bigger combine or possibly uh, adding a second uh, we do need to sell a lot of stuff but then we've got a whole load of stuff in the BGA now that just needs sorting and uh, covering and then we can do some selling of it we might try and do uh, some of that with course play there is there are ways of doing that with course play so uh, yeah we will see how we go with that There we go. 
go. Turn our beacons off because we don't need that on. I do like this combine in general. It does have its dirt texture needs a whole new one. But in general, it works brilliantly as a as a small John Deere combine. It does have quite a large grain tank, uh, which is useful. I think it has an 8,000 litre grain tank, uh, which is why I don't want to do uh, on uh, Oregon Springs. That's why I don't want to replace with the other uh, John Deere combine I've got, the S series, because the other S series only has an 11,000 litre, uh, sorry, an 8,000 litre grain tank, which is the same size as this combine. Now this is a much smaller combine, so I don't quite understand that. We may there may be a case actually. Whoop, wrong button. There may be a case for putting a longer. Yeah. Oh wow. Yes. I think what we can do on this combine is probably put a bigger, a much much bigger. Uh, header on it. So that would also be a solution. We could almost double the size of the header looking at the size of our order. That goes out quite a way. And that would be a lot cheaper upgrade. Maybe this combine isn't as small as I thought. I'm judging it by its header, but yeah, that's why it takes so long for the combine to fill as well. We could put we could put a header probably at least half the size again if we double. I might have a look at that as well. That would be a good, quick, cheap upgrade to this. Uh, and we could do that, actually, uh, just by selling probably this field of canola. Don't think... Oh, well, I need to check on the price of headers. But, uh, yeah, I don't think it would be that much more expensive to put, uh, to put that on here. Right, cut in. There we go. So yeah, this is the perfect size field for the size ahead that we have. Uh, we are 25% full on one round. So it's going to be fairly... Uh, it's going to be... If we do four headlands, we will have a full tank at that point. Uh, so what I'm going to do... If we get around this corner, and then I'm going to put our hired worker on it. Go. So we get round here. Forward and there we go. Right, we'll check our hired workers set up quickly. Uh, here. I do love the vehicle AI extension. It does work really well. Uh, collision checking is on. Connected field only. I was hearing. Wait during unload is off. Perfect. So, uh, oh, we don't really want to go around the field because we're doing headlines at the moment. So, hire you, jump out, and away you go. Right. So, we're going to take the TW15 now, we'll drop the header trailer off here, start it up, and we'll go and get our carting trailer. This, this tractor does take a little while to get going. So what I will do, as we're going to do a fair amount of driving back and forth, um, I will see you back at the farm. Right, so we're up at the yard. We will fill the T-Dub now with fuel. I'm hoping it's not going to cost too much. Uh, we need, yeah, we need that. Uh, we need the master trailer, so that's the one we're going to grab. In the meantime, oh, we're coming down to a thousand pounds. Yeah, we're going to fill this easily, which makes me quite happy. Oh, actually, I don't know. Well, we will do, but we're going to be very close. Right, there we go. 911 pounds. We really need to sell stuff. I 
No. Reverse up. Now, here we go. Right. So we're up to 51% in our combine. We've got our trailer. We could possibly. We may have better way have been to have done would have been to, to hook the header trailer up to the landing. I didn't think of that at the time and I don't know why. Uh, but anyway, that's done. We need to figure out what to put in that field again now. And I think we might try and expand the farm a bit as well. There's a, a couple of nice small fields that are great for episodes and a couple of nice big fields that are great for live streams. So we will see how we do with that. So, yeah. Get this back. I'm wondering if our combine is going to be full by the time we get back. The beacon's on on the road. I know people tend to call me up from that, for that from time to time. Not a huge problem with traffic, but... Uh, without traffic. But we should still have them on on British roads. Makes sense. Of course, on American maps, we should have those and the uh, indicators going. Although I never quite work out why, uh, with that with that being a road law for tractors in the states, I've never quite worked out why they um, how they indicate their turning. I mean, do they turn off their uh, hazards, show the turning, and then turn the hazards back on? Is that is that a requirement of it as well? It seems like an awful lot of effort to do that. I'm just going to have a look at our chaff as we go past. Looks like, yeah, looks like it's doing well. We do have a little bit outside, but yeah, we're good amount in there. It's a fleeting glance at it, but yeah, there is there is a good amount in there. It looks like if we bought field 17, that would give us a quicker route down to the town as well, through the farm. So across those fields. Which is kind of, kind of what happens sometimes with the with fields. You get, you get little tracks around the edge where it becomes useful. And things drive around them more than they, uh, they probably should. So our combine is up to 64%, so we're back here in plenty of time. We will, when we get up the top, we will empty the combine. It should be up to maybe, I think it will be up to the high 60%. Uh, this is only the third headland it's doing. So I'm not surprised that it's at 66%, but we might as well empty it. Give us a good amount. Oh, actually, not here. We're going to do it along the back straight. There we go. Get ourselves set up. Go around, correcting himself. Yeah, because I think uphill unloading is not quite, it's not always the best way of doing it. Oh. I caught the power button. It's exceedingly annoying. There we go. Now we should be able to keep this distance. The combine will go slightly ahead as it turns the corner, unless it does a. Oh wow, it's empty. So that's good. Right, we've got one. Well, we probably get away with three headlands, actually. Turn our head off, jump out. And we will take control of the combine. There we go. Turn it on. And away we go. Yeah, three headlands is going to be plenty for us to turn around. We will head into the middle of the 
field. Look at that. It's interesting, I think it smoothed out the extra bit that we had. Which is one of the nice things about the AI. It does tend to does tend to smooth out rush edges, rough edges, unless your combine is doing what it was doing on Oregon Springs where it was sliding all over the place. There we go. Right, so we planted this field across like that. Come out of this bit here. That. Line everything up. So we've done that, we will go into the middle of the field. As per normal, as per um, normal farming practice, I don't think we're actually going to get much more than a single trailer off this if we get that. Right. We go in here. that's the right direction yes it is uh, we want to line up with that hedge there so we're going cab for that oh it's very high in this cab uh, okay I'm gonna do it based on where the lie of the hill is which is yeah much worse yeah we are better off outside normally you go in cab and you can get a much better feel for it line things up to be from the window but with us with us climbing the uh, the hill it's causing us a lot more trouble but we got the peak of the tank or the great tank that we can line up with but yeah if i was if i was in a, in a real combine I would, I would pick something on the ahead of me and line up with that and that would give me on the straight and narrow and that then puts you in a great position because all you have to do is follow the previous one. And that's actually quite good. I'm quite happy with that. Back in we go. So we've got about 10 minutes left in this episode, I think. Maybe slightly less. That's good. We will get we will definitely get this field out today, which is fantastic. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Very nice. It will be a good amount that we get off here. Uh, I'm also going to change what we're doing like that. So that when we need to unload, which we may not need to do to be honest. Uh, but when we do, we can put this on a hard worker and, uh, and get it working right. We will probably set it going the wrong way for the pipe. Because that way, by the time we get to the tractor and get lined up, it will be, uh, it will be the right way with the pipe. Because, of course, it doesn't open a field up like this. I would love it. I really would love it if there was a way course play could do this. I would use course play for harvesting and course, course play open fields up like this. And I'm just... I'm just my, my wonder about that is whether that is just a case of the right maths in the course play programming to, to work out where all the rows are or whether that is uh, whether that is absolutely beyond what this game can do which is uh, yeah intriguing and I've not I've not really looked into course play only yet I've not got into the guts of the code Right, there we go. Let's finish this row. And up. And round. And down. There we go. Oh, 
Oh, that's a lovely shot. I think I've missed my chance with the uh, with the tractor to get a picture. That doesn't mean I can, can't get a decent one to come back like that. Good. So I think my plan at the moment is uh, is to stay on the west coast until Oakfield comes out. So we will place. Uh, West Coast with Oakfield when that map is available. I have seen Landy and Sim have both done first looks on it, so I don't think it's too far away now. And then on, uh, we should have a role play starting next week. A new role play, and we will see how many days a week that goes for. And then, uh, and then, yeah, we have the time lapse. So we're actually, we've got three, well, four series going that are all very different. All doing the same game, but in different ways. And I think that's an interesting thing to do. I think that's, there should be something there for everybody, then. And we'll see how that goes. Not at fifty percent again, yeah. This is this is gonna be about a tank's worth, I think. With less than fifty percent of the field to go. That's uh, yeah. There's there's not a tank's worth here, I don't think. Which is incredible because we uh, this has all been fertilized. This got three stage fertilized, plowed the works, so this has had the most off it it can get. And uh, yeah, it's not a huge year. Admittedly, it's a small field compared to our other ones, but it is not a huge year. And uh, yeah, a bigger, a bigger header, I think, is I need to look at this because we'd have had this well with a header as uh, half the width again would have had this field out in about 15 minutes, 15-20 minutes, which is a good, good amount of time to have this, uh, to have this done in. Uh, but it would also help us with our larger stuff as well. There we go, 50%, there is not 50% here. Probably got another. Oh, we might have another forty percent though. That's a possibility. We'll clean up this a little bit down this corner. Yeah. Before we head back up the hill, and uh, I don't know. If, I don't think we need to cut in. To be honest, I think we're, we're not worried about leaving the pipe out the open side it's uh, it's not that much there round we go and that's in oh not quite wide enough header that's okay spin around and get that last little bit We'll go and finish up the bit of the top of the So uh, let us know in the comments what kind of stuff you'd like to see next. And what kind of stuff you'd like to see on here further. Um, we could put the pigs in. Uh, we don't have pigs in on the map at the moment. Uh, we could see if we can expand our sheep and our cows a bit more. Uh, this is probably going to be the last map I do for a while 
where I try and build up to the animals. I think we're going to start with a good collection of animals uh, from the beginning. So that we can look after those. We will still have transport trailers and things because we still want to sell them. But uh, yeah, we will, we will start with a decent number of, uh, uh, a number of animals that are applicable to the farm. So like on here, I would probably do a herd of about 30 sheep. And on our, uh, on our role play, we'll probably do something like that as well. Interesting to have a look at uh, sheep and cow numbers on uh, multi, uh, multi agriculture farms. You know, that aren't just uh, arable or aren't just uh, animals. Back up a little bit so that we are not worried about coming back for it. Yeah. Up and round. Perfect. Excellent. So we are probably two strips away from finishing this, I think. Oh, we might we might get it all in one head. Possibly. I don't think we're going to be able to sell enough crop from this field to buy a header. I, <laughs> I think that's unlikely. That's uh yeah. Well, we're this actually this combine looking at it six thousand liters uh, or just over by the looks of things. Whereas, uh, maybe even seven, but it's it's not, what, we're at 67%. 67% and we're at, well, yeah. I actually, I'm not even sure it is. 66%, uh, no, it's a 7,000 meter from mine, isn't it? And what it'll be. do we have in the, the we've got five in the TW already yeah so it's not going to be a full trailer it's going to be yeah it's going to be just over half a trailer wow that's 48,000 uh, 4800 meters on the dot go turn the combine off We can definitely put a bigger header on this. There we are. So that's where we're going to leave it today. I'm uh, I'm very happy with that. We've done ooh, we've done well. There we go. So uh, all that remains is for me to say. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Please give it a like, drop us a comment and give it a share. And for all the latest videos and live streams from Virtual Farmer, please subscribe to the channel and press that notification bell icon for all the latest uh, notifications on the channel too. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.